In this video, I'm going to cover my approach to watercolor painting. I'll make sure to include the basic materials and techniques that I typically use. For this example, I made a painting of my dog, Fisher. Look at that good boy. To finish the piece, I drew inspiration from the pattern work of an artist named Blaine Fontana. I'm using a new set of paints, so I wanted to make a quick reference chart to see what these paints look like. For watercolor, I like to use two cups of water, one for cleaning brushes and one that always has clean, clear water to paint with. A good watercolor brush will be pretty soft with longer bristles in order to hold water. Add some disposable paper plates with a waxy coating to use as a palette. You don't need much paint when using watercolor since you'll be stretching and diluting the color with water. Paper towels are also very important for lightening colors, erasing mistakes, and cleaning brushes. Here I'm adding water to the paint, but I'm only using a little bit of paint. Most of the paint is still in a pile here on the plate, and I'm diluting just a small bit to the side. For each color, I'm going to create a value scale or gradient, going for a smooth transition from dark to light. Once I have the dark color down, I'm using fresh water to blend the color out and make it lighter. Then I use the paper towel to soak up the color before it dries, making it lighter on this side. Practicing scales like this is one similarity that visual artists have with musicians, who also learn scales to become familiar with their instruments. When blending or fading, I like to lay the brush down on its side and let the full length of the bristles help to blend the paint. Once you find out how much water and how much paint to use, you'll have the majority of watercolor painting figured out. See how the paper has a good amount of water saturation. It's not too wet or too dry. I was able to fit all 24 colors of my reference chart on one plate. With watercolor, you really don't need much paint. You should also notice that you'll have one cup of murky water and one that's always got clean water to paint with. Next, I started lightly sketching my dog using this reference image. I'm using 300 pound cold press watercolor paper. I like 300 pound because it's super thick so it won't warp when I'm painting. So this first attempt ended up being a failure for multiple reasons. When I was freehand drawing, it took me a while to notice what was off. At this point, I felt like it looked pretty good. I cleaned off my paper plate and picked out a few colors to use for the fur. Then I practiced blending these colors together. I was going for a slightly more saturated version of the fur colors you see in this section of the image. I figured I could apply this combination of colors to most of his fur. I also wanted to make this pale bluish white color to add to the shading on his face. Then I experimented with how these colors would blend together. Now it's time to start painting. Keep in mind this first version ended up being a failure, but I did learn a few things while working on it. My approach here was to start with very light, diluted colors and then gradually get darker. I'm not sure how it happened, but around the time I was painting the nose, I somehow flicked paint all over the place. I didn't even notice until the paint had dried, so I tried to fix it by painting over the spots. This led me down a path of overworking the area between the eyes. It's easy to overwork a watercolor painting. If you notice yourself spending too much time in one area, it's best to keep moving and let that space dry up before coming back to it. I liked the colors and the textures I was putting down, but ultimately there were several proportional issues with this first draft that made the painting look a little strange. So for version 2, I decided to transfer the proportions instead of freehanding them. For this, all you have to do is print the image you want to transfer, outline important features on the back of the page, fill in these areas with a thick layer of graphite, tape the image into place on your watercolor paper, then trace around important features with a pen. The pressure from your pen will transfer the graphite onto the watercolor paper. This method was much quicker than freehanding and it ensures my proportions will be more accurate. By this point my paints from the failed attempt had already dried, but with watercolor you can just add a drop of water to make the paints functional again. I took the same approach to applying layers of paint on this version, starting with lighter colors first, then gradually building up layers and adding darker colors.
I felt pretty good about his face at this point, but I wanted to do something unique for the background. I really like Blaine Fontana's use of pattern in his animal paintings. So I used my rough draft to practice with a few pattern ideas. Ultimately, I went with this geometric blue pattern. I covered most of the background with triangles, circles, and squares using a stencil. I mixed up a color that went well with my color scheme, then filled in each of the shapes, using paper towel to soak up color if things got too dark. My last step was to complete the body and try to fade things to white at the bottom. I used a little dry brush technique here to add texture. The dry brush effect uses a brush with mostly dry pigment to lightly scrape paint over the textured surface of the paper. Once my paint was dry, I went back and erased all the stray pencil lines and then I was finished. This is just the first of several animal portraits I plan to do in this style. Thank you for watching.